This video is sponsored by Squarespace, the all-in-one solution for anyone looking to create an awesome website. Welcome back to a new episode of Guide Runner, a series where I casually guide you through the creation of a piece of my photo manipulation artwork, giving you a little insight into my thought process and a few tips and tricks along the way. Today's piece is loosely inspired by images of oversized flora which we see in movies like Alice in Wonderland and Avatar. We're going to be creating and following a small squad of soldiers as they traverse giant branches and roots on an unfamiliar planet. We'll also throw in a few hidden dangers along the way. I also just want to take a moment to let you know I'm working on some new ideas for videos which could potentially develop into more regular series depending on whether you guys enjoy them or not. The aim is to keep things fresh and keep the channel evolving so be on the lookout for those in the coming weeks. First things first, we need a background and the main job here is to keep it pretty simple since the main focus will be on our giant branches. We also want to give some indication of being fairly high up in the sky, hence all the clouds and mist. Okay, we've got our first tree. Now I've done a lot of the cutting out beforehand. The idea of watching me cut out a load of trees doesn't sound all that entertaining. I've done a pretty shoddy job with this first one, to be fair, but I'm sure I'll clean it up later. With a piece like this that's going to have a lot of long, twisty shapes that wind off into the distance, getting the composition right is going to be crucial, but also pretty difficult. It's definitely worth spending a good amount of time playing around with the different positions and angles. This portion of the tree needed sprucing up a little, so I'm just dropping another image on top with a quick blend to help give it a bit more variation in form and texture. Dropping in another tree which we'll place off in the distance and do a little bit of warping just to get the position right. I'm then going to clip a colour adjustment layer to it, choose a nice blue and lower the opacity of the layer to simulate some atmospheric perspective. It's also looking a bit too chunky in parts so using a hard edge brush I'm also going to mask away certain areas. I found a cool looking tree here to place in the middle ground, I love the texture and mossy green colours on this one. And we're going to apply the same colour fill adjustment as before, choosing a slightly darker blue since it's closer to the viewer. I've just about got all my branches into the scene now, the composition is okay, it's a little sketchy and we'll need some adjustment later, particularly in the top middle section off to the left, it looks a bit empty and weird right now. Adding a tree in the top left foreground should help with that a little bit and also help give the scene some framing. But before we continue, let me introduce today's sponsor, Squarespace. A strong website is an essential tool for anyone looking to promote their work. Before Squarespace, I dreaded the idea of having to create a website, mainly because I'd wanted it to look awesome, but I knew I didn't have the skill set to do so. With Squarespace, they do all the heavy lifting, making sure your website not only looks impressive, but also provides a smooth user experience. I consider my own website to be the nucleus of my operation, a home for all my creative output, a place to showcase my latest artworks, YouTube content, and current client list. Squarespace makes this possible with its simple to use 
website customization tools. Once I've uploaded a YouTube video, I drop into Squarespace to update my homepage. Once there, I click edit and replace the image for the most current thumbnail. Then I simply update the web address, update the text, and finally click the button to make sure the link is pointing to the new YouTube video. Squarespace also offers a wide array of features like members areas, blogging tools, and something that I'm constantly using, website analytics. Here I can track by month how my website is performing, what page is getting the most attention, and importantly, which page isn't. Squarespace also offers many modern templates to choose from for those who just want to get up and running as quickly as possible. Be sure to check out squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash phase runner to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. I'll drop a link in the description below. I'm always looking for opportunities to add a little bit of originality to my scenes when possible. We've seen giant trees and branches plenty of times before, so just to help this scene stand out a little, I like the idea of including some large, slightly translucent thorns. Plus, nobody likes thorns, so this should help add to the dangerous atmosphere of this unknown alien environment. They're quite prominent features, so getting the placement right will take some experimenting. Once they're roughly in place, I can then start blending them with the landscape. I think they turned out pretty good, I'll need to add a few more off in the distance. To do that I'm simply going to use the lasso tool to draw them in and then fill them with an appropriate colour. Alright, now we're introducing our squad members. And you'll notice just how important these human elements are. Right away, because we know roughly how large a human is, including them in the scene suddenly gives our whole environment a sense of scale, something that's really important factor for this artwork. It also gives some much needed story and creates questions as to why they're here and what they're doing. So I'm just blending them in. Two of them are looking pretty alert. Uh, I don't know where the guy in the back's going. It doesn't seem that bothered. Dropping in a few pterodactyls to add to that unfamiliar feeling and applying the motion blur filter just to give them a bit of movement. It needed a few more distinctive clouds just to really drive home the height factor. I don't know about you, but I always struggle to find the right kind of cloud texture that's also easy to extract. I've been using this image a lot recently, it usually does the job nicely for single cloud placement. And then adding some highlights to our squad members using a mix of exposure and hue and saturation adjustment layers. Ah, you can also get a good glimpse at some of those pretty rubbish blends on the tree, but fear not, I'll address those later. I wanted to add that translucent look to the thorns in the distance that I mentioned earlier, so I messed around with the layer styles using red for the colour overlay, and then applying inner glow to match the tree bark colour. And yeah, that doesn't look too bad. Of course, we need some giant fungi or mushrooms in there. I managed to resist the urge to make them glow. There goes my millions of views, but oh well, we've got a vision in mind, so we gotta stick to it. And then just using this other mushroom image, we've got a slight variation in mushrooms. Oh, 
Okay, I think I'll leave you there to enjoy the music and let these final moments play out. I hope you like the final result. Thank you for watching. Please click that like button if you've enjoyed, subscribe to the channel and hit that bell to stay notified about any new content.